Welcome to Read Rate Request, where two college professors take a second look at questions and answers from around the internet. And from you, the listener, my name is Professor Will McBurney. And my name is Professor Mark Sheriff. And something came in the mail today that I wanted to share with you. I think that you will find this very amusing. And it actually goes with the topic that we are doing today, which we'll get into in a second. We don't want to give that away too early. But my little girl, Sammy, precious Sammy, cute little Sammy. Uh, one is a gamer, which will become important in just a moment, but also, um, has a few American girl dolls. Are, are you familiar with the American girl doll series at all? Uh, my sister had a couple, I believe. Yeah. They've been around, they've been around forever. Um, you know, my, my, my sister had them and you know, my, my, my mom still has some of those and Sammy has two and they are precious and she dresses them and you know they they they're wonderful. Well they've been coming out with more and more modern uh American go- girl dolls. They recently released um I believe um I'm, I'm blanking on the name of the particular doll but it's specifically from when we were kids like <laughs> like from the from the late 80s early 90s which is kind of amusing that that's the time frame cuz I remember when my sister was getting them at the time frame was like the 1800s yeah yeah. <laughs> so, yeah yeah we've we've moved forward a little bit now but anyway so we get the American girl catalog and so Sammy is very excited whenever this comes and this is what we found in here today I'm dropping two links for you or two pictures uh, into our channel in Discord. And so here is what we have that I will tell to our, our, our listeners at home. <laughs> so, <laughs> the, the look- so right now I have a look on my face. So there's uh, American Girl Xbox Gaming Set. That's right. Is the American Girl Xbox gaming set, and the 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 picture has the American Girl dolls having just a great old time. It says game night for the win. These girls are just having a blast playing. I don't know Halo or something, but they have the the Xbox um, gaming set, which comes with a nice little you know fuzzy bucket chair that most gamers would have. It has. What appears to be an iPhone or an iPad, it has headphones, it has two Xbox controllers, it has an Xbox Series X, a little tiny Xbox Series X mm-hmm. with DVD sitting out of it, a copy of Ori uh, and the and the Blind Forest. Fantastic choice there. I mean that mm-hmm. that just I I, I I that is wonderful. Um, they also have uh, fruit candy. I mean that that is have, the that is the brand name for clarity. Fruit, fruit candy is the band name. It has a spinner. Uh, if you see that over the bottom right. But the other thing is that this actually comes with one month of <laughs> of the Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. That is, so, that is a cross promotion I did not see coming. That is a cross. And the other thing that gets me is this tiny Xbox Series X with two controllers, with a month of Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, and a really tiny copy of Ori in the Blind Forest will set you back 60 bucks. The same price as if you were to buy a full price game for your Xbox Series X. Um, I am intrigued by this. I, you know, all of you to assume any of our listeners actually have a next gen console. Well, well, first off, let me make something not, not very from a clear. lack of effort. Even let me make something very clear. Girls are gamers, and I think it's it, it is fantastic that that they put this here because you know, toys are toys, clothes are clothes. To, you know, it, the, the, I. I'm fully supportive of this. This is just not the crossover I was ever expecting. It was, yeah. you know, it did kind of catch me off guard because two pages before this, it was still pictures of, oh, here is Meredith from the 1800s and her lamb. You know, it's that sort of, <laughs> we jumped forward a bit, yeah. uh, just a bit, just a bit. So anyway, that was my little bit of uh, excitement today. How's how's your day? How's your week going? It has been stressful. <laughs> Oh no. We, we might talk about uh some of the social factors of gaming communities today and uh an incident may come up. An incident may come up. Well, that is what we want to talk about today. The theme for today is the dangers of being a gamer. And um, I I have to uh, give credit where credit is due. Uh, I was listening to old episodes of a podcast called Sawbones. Uh, If you're not familiar with with that particular podcast uh, by the McElroy brothers, um, or specifically Justin and Sidney McElroy, and they did a 
shorter episode roughly on, you know, just some things that they'd found about um, ways that people could be. It's a medical history podcast, so there's a inj- way you got injured doing doing gaming. But I thought that uh, with our particular bend on gaming and technology, uh, we could take a crack at it, too. So I have not really questions. I actually have medical journal articles I want to uh, uh, pull up and mm-hmm. discuss, along with my usual array of no stupid questions out there. But um, who who would like to lead off today? Well, I think I think you can start in because m- m- my questions are more within the topic, but more geared towards the the social and psychological. Okay. Well, I think the 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 piece de resistance here, the chef's kiss article that we are going to start with, is an article from the Britical British Britical Britical is not a word British Medical Journal from yeah, it's the Britical Journal. It's the Britical that, Journal. That's, that's from, what they call it for short. Yeah. From December of 2014, the article entitled Nintendo Related Injuries and Other Problems Review. And um, in academic parlance, we would call this a um, a systematic literature review. Right. So what these uh, uh, these surgeons did um, from they are from the Netherlands, um, did a review of the literature, looking at all the different reports on various injuries or uh, anything that has happened related to the various Nintendo consoles. Um, and apparently the British Medical Journal, the Britical Journal, um, their December issue always has some fun articles, and this is meant to be one of their fun articles. So the, their their thesis here is it is safe to buy your kids a Nintendo console, um, but they do actually have a go through several different um, things that have happened. And, and I think going through this just kind of straight through it makes sense. It amuses me first that they intentionally separate into two eras before and after the introduction of the N- Nintendo Wii. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. <laughs> just because uh, uh, for, for those who don't know, the Nintendo Wii was famous for uh, wide scale usage of motion controls and once you have people slinging their arms around, it, it certainly creates a broader, uh, broader possibility of injury, a, a, a very blunt, blunt force trauma. But we'll get into that. Uh, so they they were able to sample 38 different uh, academic papers, uh, including um, various case reports and series and also other studies. So. Probably the most serious um, medical issue that came up originally during the time of the NES, the Nintendo Entertainment System, with Super Mario Brothers. And this is the one that we still see warnings about today. And that is the epilepsy warning that we'll see at the beginning of many games. When it turns on, um, several games will say, if you are sensitive to light, if you're sensitive to motion patterns, um, you know, consult a doctor before you play a, a, a lot of video games. And this actually stems from a case from a 13-year-old girl that had a generalized seizure playing Super Mario Brothers back in 1984. And this this epilepsy itself uh, was actually attributed back to the rapid change of on-screen colors and patterns. That was what was diagnosed as the right. specific thing that 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 um caused her to have an epileptic. Uh, I mean, she was already uh, prone, um, but this is what, you know, kicked it off. So ever since then, um, we see this warning and it's something definitely to keep in mind because certainly various games that are out there and this is not even Nintendo particular related this is video games in general there are games out there that have wildly flashing color patterns or loud music or something that could be sensory overload to a degree it could be you know even a child that is neurodiverse and has some sort of sensory mm-hmm. sensitivity you know, it's something to be aware of if you have kids playing games or or, or even for yourself to know what your limits are. Mm-hmm. Um, have you played any games where um, it's really like giving you a headache or gotten to you? I mean, not necessarily giving you epileptic seizures. Right. Um, While you're thinking, yeah. um, I'll, I'll chime in and say that I, I playing on the Nintendo 3DS um in certain lighting. So for those of you that uh, don't know, the 3DS has stereoscopic, you know, 3D 
there's a slider that you can change the 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 amount of 3D that's happening at one time. And there's some games that I really enjoy the 3D, but after an hour of playing it, my skull didn't appreciate it too terribly much. Mm. Um, that's the one that really stands out to me. I haven't actually experienced any any difficulty that I can think of. Um, I, I'm I'm trying to remember. If, like the only thing I think of is maybe there's some game that has like an intentionally, uh, for lack of a better word here, like trippy sequence. And I'm trying to think if there is one where like it caused my eyes to hurt, or or something like that. And nothing's yeah, coming to mind. Yeah, thinking games like Res or something like that. Those are ones that I could or Luminous. Those are games that. <laughs> yeah, I guess I don't tend to play they could pot- arcade games as much. Like arcade um, style, to clarify, but not sure, not literal arcade games. What's an arcade? I mean, yeah. those are people, and you know, so. After that case, the uh, the the cases that these that the the authors found beyond this very serious case that now you know has changed the way we uh, that that, uh. that warnings have given to games. Right. Um, there were cases of uh, kids that had issues with um, basically bladder problems, and it it turned out it was because they played video games for so long they just never went to the toilet, and that was. The, the diagnosis huh. from the doctor was, hey, you probably should stop if you they have just, to go. They were just that in the zone. As a matter of fact, there was another there was a kid who was taken to the ER with severe neck pain from playing the Game Boy for about four hours with his chin touching his chest because he was bent over right. the entire time. Yeah. So a lot of this was was kind of attributed to just better better behavior when consuming the Mm. media and Nintendo has actually addressed this. If you look at um, games like um, ring fit adventure, there's one that we've both played. Mm. It will actually at various times say, Hey, maybe you should take a break and go outside. Mario Odyssey will do this on occasion. Mm -hmm. I mean that Nintendo has strategically now placed in some of their main titles, these kind of intentional, Hey, maybe you should go do something else. Okay. Um, the affliction, I suppose, that they go into next that I still am dealing with is the th- the dreaded Nintenditis, which is a repetitive stress injury. Right. Basically, your thumbs, <laughs> your thumb hurts. Yeah. And to this, my my left thumb still, um, I have to wear a brace on it sometimes, and. Yeah, uh, huh. I, I think this is people of our age category. This is going to be something that we are worrying about more. <laughs> right. I, I can't re- remember experiencing it. I do know I'm I'm pretty sure I know one of the things that will come up that I have certainly experienced, but it's not it's not specifically this. Oh, I can't. Oh, OK, we'll see that um, if you want kind of the more uh, random ones. So in the Nintendo 64 era, there we when go. they in- can oh, I, here we go. Can I chime in? Okay, go for it. Uh, Mario Party One is an evil, evil game. The tug of war mini game is is the source of literally thousands upon thousands of blisters, hand blisters. And how did you get those blisters? So you probably in, need to clarify before people start thinking. All right, so so in in Mario Party One in tug of war, the way that you pull is you spin the joystick, which on the Nintendo 64 is a hard plastic ridged joystick. Uh, not not rubber, no cushion whatsoever. Hard plastic. And, and I believe that the AI, the way that they kind of calibrated the AI in the tug of war game, that is the speed that the computer can rotate, is what they did is they like hooked the joystick up to like a Corvette engine and then like just <laughs> slammed the gas as hard as they could. And just like that's like, okay, that's easy, right? <laughs> A, a, seriously, like this is just a, a widely regarded thing where it's just the joystick spinning mini mini games on even low difficulty. It's hard for humans to beat. It's so hard that it's impossible to win spinning the joystick with your thumb. Human thumbs can't move that fast. Human so, thumbs can't move that fast. So, we have our episode title. So what you did 
was you put the palm of your hand on the joystick and got your mm-hmm. whole arm into the motion. Right? You got, you got a, it's a full body activity here. It's and, good um, cardio. And I, we had rented Mario Party 1, <laughs> and I really wanted to beat the minigame island before we had to take it back, back to Blockbuster. Well, well yeah, you got to get every dollar out of that. Yeah, and so the game that stopped me repeatedly was Tug of War. And I worked really hard at that and ended up with about a, a nickel size blister on my hand. <laughs> and then I kept laugh, playing because I still couldn't beat it. Um, and it popped. And so there's actually oh. a slight little scar on my hand, actually, from where I had a blister. Yeah, not wounds. a scar, but a discoloration um, on my oh, right man. hand. And uh, first, for those who don't know, the Nintendo 64 controller was uh, an abomination that <laughs> was painful to behold. Uh, if you had, they're re-releasing it. If you had three hands, it might be a good controller. Uh, not, it wouldn't be, but it, it it could in theory have been if you had three hands. Um, but specifically, one of the changes they have made is that all the joysticks and consoles since not just Nintendo, but all have been rubberized. And in fact, I mean, the the PlayStation 1 controller was already rubberized. Uh, That was one factor of it. But Nintendo actually had to, basically, you could mail in and get a glove for your hand. That was the class action suit. and And it was strictly Mario Party 1. They have not, in any Mario Party game since, had spinning the joystick rapidly as a required control. Some where you spin it, but it, it's done slowly, and it doesn't matter really how fast you do it. So, yeah. I I am... I You knew every aspect of that, and it's amazing. Yeah, because I experienced it. <laughs> you, you, Viscerally. You, the, you're a survivor. The tug-of-war you, minigame is the most bull You need a support thing. group. <laughs> Nintendo 64. All right. So we have we have reached now. Apparently nothing happened during the GameCube era that was worth that was worth reporting. So we well, hit I the mean, Wii. N- with, with injuries or otherwise, frankly. I, oh, come on. There were some good games on GameCube. All right. So let me I'm going to read a few direct quotes from the journal article here. Okay. Um, first, it was talking about the notion of that Wii is a motion control based system. Mm-hmm. And it said this resulted in new types of injury, mostly traumatic ones. <laughs> there we go. Oh, oh, there we go. Uh, the preliminary report data indicates that most injuries were confined to the upper extremities, face and neck, and most of them were uh, bruising, lacerations, and hematomas. <laughs> and so they reported that the first documented Wii-related injury, which has now been dubbed Wii-itis, of course was seen in a 29-year-old man who experienced basically the equivalent of tennis wrist, tennis elbow, from mm-hmm. repetitive stress of playing Wii Tennis. Matter of fact, in case you're curious, when doing an evaluation of all of the injuries reported from people using the Wii, not only Wii Sports, but specifically Wii Tennis was the culprit in the majority of the cases. Hmm. So I guess there's just more opportunity for swinging your hand around and just injuring way more people. So um, in all these cases, when it was a, a case of weeitis, uh, rest and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs was the appropriate way of treating uh, such a thing. But um, more cases continue to come up. Uh, it, in, including the case of a woman who played bowling for six to eight hours daily for over 10 days. And this particular woman uh, d- developed a, a pretty bad carpal tunnel right. um, from that motion over and over and over. And of course, there are certainly the cases of uh, numerous bruises and um, lacerations as people swing their Wii around, to which... We all know what Nintendo did in response to this. They released those lovely silicone, yep. unfortunately dubbed Wii condoms uh, <laughs> that we would place upon the Wii remotes that theoretically would um, have a little bit more padding to them to protect uh, in case you got smashed into a thing. But um, 
Later in the Wii's life, they introduced another peripheral called the the, the balance board. Mm-hmm. Did you did you have a balance board? I never had uh, a balance actually, board. Actually, so I didn't have one, but my half siblings did. So I, I have half okay. siblings that are uh, quite a bit younger than me. So apparently, the uh, balance board uh, introduced a whole other category of injuries. Most of them with your knees uh, due to balancing, and they for some reason, determined that the t- term for this should be we knee. Okay. And I can't... The the 10-year-old in me thinks it's hilarious that someone can have a weenie. <laughs> yeah, I see. I see where you're going with that. I'm sorry. I'm just... It's... it's, it's I imagine it's there's funny. more than a couple falling injuries as well. Well, in fact, uh, they have a case here of a 55-year-old woman who sustained a massive uh, hemothorax after falling over her sofa while playing Wii Tennis. Um, And also, uh, later on, uh, other injuries, basically, uh, on the Wii balance board. So, uh, at the end of the day, what is the, the, the conclusion of this medical journal article? And here is the final thesis. Overall... Wait, can I guess? Can I I guess? Can I guess? Please. Mario Party 1 is bullshit. That, that uh, They have an acknowledgement specifically about that. It's very, very interesting. Uh, overall, a Nintendo is a relatively safe Christmas present. However, those who receive such a gift should not swing the controller too hard. They should be careful about where they play. And they should take frequent breaks. So, there is your official medical journal history of injuries and dangers from using Wii consoles. Or Nintendo consoles. All right. Well, let's take a step away now from the the physical damage and go to the emotional the emotional damage. damage. Yes. <laughs> oh, I love this place. Let's so, go here again. All right. So I'm gonna, of course, have my rant right now about microtransactions. But oh, Lord. let's start. I want to read a headline of a Fortnite article. Uh, an article, well, a Polygon article about Fortnite. Okay. Fortnite right. is free, but kids are getting bullied into spending money. The subtitle is The Stigma of Being a Default. Oh, that's an interesting, that's an interesting epithet. I know exactly what it means. <clears throat> yes. So, so for those who don't know what it means, uh, in Fortnite, when you first join the game, you aren't really given any cosmetic items. And then the way the game is set up, every time you play, everyone starts with the same equipment, in theory has the same chance. There's no gear that gives you better stats that you can't just find while playing. Everyone starts with effectively the same baseline gear. And the point of the game is to look for better gear and then use that to try to win the game. Right. Um, but, but how your character looks is controllable via cosmetics, and those cosmetics are largely paid for. Oh yeah, and they have they have all these you know mm-hmm. tie-ins. You can get Avengers characters. You can get your jerseys of your favorite football team, soccer team. I mean, like Star Wars. All, yeah, everything. You can buy all sorts of stuff. And there's the emphasis. You can buy it. So Fortnite is a free-to-play game. And it is making, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, a boatload of money every time that, like, they release a new skin. I believe it's a boatload. Or maybe it's it's an English boatload, not a metric boatload. But it's, it's still a boatload of money. Well... There have been a rising number of cases of actual in-school, in-person bullying where in where insults have occurred using the term noob and default, specifically well, addressing default as a real-life insult strictly comes from the Fortnite community. Interesting. I mean, it, noob, noob has been around for a while. Noob but has to been call around someone, for a while. Right. But... Specifically, because of how popular Fortnite is, specifically with children, this is where it gets into, and and the article goes into, kids will, uh, you know, actually view 
having good skins or, or new skins in Fortnite as a sign of skill, even though it's not a sign of skill, you buy it with money. It It's a sign of your parents' skill in having gainful employment, I guess, and having enough disposable income to spend them on video game skins. But well, it, it shows your skill at swiping a credit card yeah. from your parents, I guess. But no, so like you, you can go <laughs> on and there's all these different videos on YouTube. I was watching one earlier and it's like a guy who actually has played in Fortnite tournaments going into a server with default skin. People keep kicking him off the team. They'll team kill him or they'll just insult him the whole game because he has a default skin. Again, this is a guy who actually makes money playing in tournaments and he'll win the game, but the whole time his team will throw insults at him because he's using a default skin instead of a pay wow. skin. And so specifically what's going on here is is this is the the end result of using social pressure as a marketing tool. And mm. this is not just within Fortnite and this is not just with cosmetic upgrades. Uh one of the most popular sports games is NBA 2K. Mm -hmm. And in NBA 2K uh, you create, you know, there's a big emphasis on creating your own character. When you play online anymore, you don't really play like you control a team, the other guy controls a team, and you each play. You control one player, and you play with other people against other people. But your character starts out with a very bad rating. Typically, I think it's like a 60 on a scale of 0 to 99, 60, there's there's basically no other players in the NBA with a rating that low. And what you could do is you could spend literally dozens upon dozens of hours playing the single player game in order to trickle in enough of the in-game currency to make your character good, which, by the way... It's hard to do because when your character sucks, your coach won't play you, meaning you can't get stats, meaning you can't earn money. So it's sort of a mm. vicious cycle in that respect. Or you could go online and just play the, the multiplayer game if you want to. Except, and, and I, I actually do like basketball a lot. I did get NBA 2K22. And I have not spent any money on microtransactions, which, to be clear, come in the form of buying in-game currency that you then spend on yourself, like, to make yourself better. That's how you raise your rating. It's the weirdest currency exchange ever. Yeah. So I went I went in, not, not planning on spending any microtransactions. I'm like, okay, it's the first day. Let me just go online and play now, because I know I'm not going to get to play a bunch online, you know, because of... By, you know, a month from now, everyone's going to be 99. I don't have that time. Literally the day the game came out that evening, most of the people it paired me against were above a 90 rating. And it's just mathematically not possible that they got there through grinding the game. Mm -hmm. yep. They spent real world money on it. And the problem is when I get into that game, I then get insulted by my teammates uh, verbally, as well as the opponent, because my player rating is too low. Because I'm not spending money to make it higher. So that, in my in, in in my opinion, that social pressure is arguably worse because it doesn't just translate to the social pressure. But it's, I mean, it's, it's literally at that point it's pay to win. Yeah, it, it's pay to win. And, and in fact, people have recognized that the grind that it takes, the amount of time it takes to get to a high rating without spending money has increased. They have oh, of added has. an inconvenience to the game, and now they're selling you the solution. Mm. Uh, and again, the emphasis here, and this is very much the case, it is trying to create not just the idea that it is normal to spend extra money on the game, but in fact it is abnormal not to, and it in it, it it creates these social pressures as a marketing tool. 
So that's my first little rant on microtransactions. Not the only one I'll probably have, but um, is just the use of social pressures, which translate into real life uh, now in schools because kids can be terrible to each other. <laughs> Newsflash. Yeah. I, it comes up in other games too, but not necessarily to this degree. I mean, so, you know, I we both play games where you can buy... You know, I buy packs in Hearthstone. You can buy heroes in Heroes of the Storm or, you know, whatever your game of choice is. And, you know, for me, there's a there's a, a social pressure on some level where when an expansion launches for Hearthstone, I see all of these people on Twitter posting, here's the cool new deck. Here's the fun thing. Here's the awesome thing to be playing right now. And while it's not the, I guess, directed negative pressure that you were you were talking about here it's much more of a fear of missing out pressure right there is it, an it, abuse of fomo yeah exactly and uh i mean i but that, i mean that that was a case with pokemon trading cards or magic trading cards i mean right. it's not like i mean you know when i was in when i was in middle school it was did you have the leather jacket i mean some of this is an evolution of mm-hmm. that sort of status symbol bullying that there has been since the you know the beginning of children right um but it certainly has been exacerbated yeah um with cyber bullying well or cyber bullying turning into in-person bullying yeah i i I would even go further to say so i a game that everyone points to is star wars battlefront 2 just because when it came out it was extraordinarily pay to win but really i think and I, and I think I mentioned this before. There's this popular notion now that, oh, microtransactions are okay only if they're cosmetic. And I don't agree with that notion. Um, one, because it leads to this social pressure issue. But two, um, you know, going back to our gameplay discussion, some people view winning the game as collecting all these different uh, costumes or these these cosmetics. Mm-hmm. And so for them, it is absolutely pay to win. But I think actually the the first $60 game, like the game that you actually pay full price for, so not free to play, that really, I think, bothers me is Overwatch. Um, hmm. and, and specifically Overwatch because... It you you couldn't even just buy a skin in Overwatch. The only way to get a skin in Overwatch was to roll it in a loot box. It literally was forced gambling if you wanted to unlock something. And that model specifically has, has become very prevalent in, in, in other Blizzard games. Uh, the gotcha model. Yeah, and, and specifically that you have to gamble for it. Uh, and, and, and there's more than enough cases to show where people with gambling addictions, you know, are getting sucked in by this. And a lot of, in fact, what's arguably worse about it in my mind is a lot of people use video games as an outlet for the the interactive nature of gambling. And now it's kind of followed them there. And I, and I think that's Mm, depressing and disheartening in my mind. Oh man, that was a bummer. Sorry. I mean, not it's, no, it's not not as fun as kids having bladder issues, I guess, or weenies. Well, so, all right. Well, how about how I? I'm gonna. This one's gamer. This is gaming related. It's not. It's not really a danger, but mm-hmm. it was kind of in the same category. It was a no stupid question. I thought it was a fine one to throw in here. And the question is from no stupid questions from the subreddit. How the blank do I explain the cloud to my grandparents? And this uh, is, well, this it's is just, it's just a, a, a water that's condensated in the sky, right? And, and, and because uh, it refracts light, it looks white at a distance. Uh, whereas so, Raleigh scattering makes the sky look blue. Am I, am I, am I on the right track? So the, the meteorologist in my hometown long time ago, his, his name is Larry Sprinkle. And that is so perfect for, <laughs> To be the meteorologist, my, my, just like my, my da- neighbor is 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 a meteorologist for uh, for for our local NBC affiliate. Oh, really? Yes, that's interesting. Yeah. Anyway, 
No, you know what I'm talking about. And this is act. The cloud is in cloud computing, of mm-hmm. course. Um, but this is also interesting as far as uh, gamer danger, uh, because um, modern parents, um, you know, when 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 my mom or dad told me I, it was time to pause the game, we could. But there's many games now where you, you can't. can't. Yep. Uh, and part of it is due to the nature that you are playing in the cloud. You are playing with other people. Mm-hmm. Um, but how how would you? So we're not. Let's not explain anymore what the cloud is. What is the simplest way to explain? I'm playing online. I'm playing in the cloud. Uh so let's. Well, let's start with uh, couch multiplayer and work our way from there. So okay. couch multiplayer early game. You sit down. You sit down with a yeah, lazy with- boy. And you try to beat the lazy boy yeah. at yeah, it, NBA 2K. That, that that couch really good at Mario Party 2. <laughs> it um, can spin. It can spin. No, no, that's that Mario. Stick. No, no, no. It, it couldn't do any spinning. That's why it was bad at Mario Party One. It got it got uh, the the it got tears on the cushions. Uh, no, are you going to so, get Mario? Are you going to get the new part, Mario Party? It's coming out. Uh, probably not. Um, hmm. I was very disappointed with Super Mario Party. So, oh, and, I'm sorry. Um, so. Yeah, this was this was the multiplayer my brother and I would play. Uh, we had a Nintendo sixty four. It was split screen, basically. You know, Golden is kind of a, a a seminal mark in this. You'd have two players both looking at the same screen, playing against each other. Now you could go up to four players in Golden Eye, but that was it because that was all the controller ports there were, and you could only split the screen up four ways. Uh, now. Flash forward to my college years, I get to college, and one of the fun Friday night activities, because I was in computer science, so I'm a nerd, Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, was playing Halo 2 over the dorm LAN, that is local area network, so... God, for me it was Quake. Yeah. So so we would... even Doom 1. Yeah. So So we would all connect our Xbox to the... Uh, Ethernet network that is the the wi- the physical wired network in our dorm, and we would play against each other over that network. So we weren't even actually going out onto the internet. We were playing with LAN, and, and the first Halo actually only supported this. And the way that you could play it was you would actually have four TVs and four Xboxes all either linked together or linked together over a LAN network. So that way you could have up to sixteen players. So we actually ha- so we ha- ha- bought a, a uh, you know a hub. Mm-hmm. I guess it was a hub at the time instead of a router, and we just set it in the middle of the hallway, and everyone had to buy their own cable. And right. you, <laughs> you, you would, I mean, we're, not, we're just talking about a physical network here. We're really talking about a yeah. physical network. So then, of course, well, you, you start to get the internet. You start to have people wanting to play online. And, and actually, the original Halo did not have Xbox Live. It was it was Halo Two true. that had Xbox true. Live, which was uh, relatively new at the time. Uh, the Dreamcast was actually the first console that had online gaming, and it did not, not work true. very well. It wasn't not true. Not Genesis true. did. Genesis did. Gen- oh, I guess yeah. K- uh, Sega Sega TV or K- Sega Cable yeah. or yeah, it was. They had it like was short lived. It was short lived. Very short lived. You know, yeah. I remember my actually my friend had it. I do remember it now. But you, you, weren't playing, you weren't playing with people interactively yeah. online. I, I just wanted to be right. That's yeah. all. Uh, so so the Dreamcast <laughs> was technically the first that would allow you to play against other people online. And and the way that early and, and P well, PC would do this first. And the way that PC online gaming would work is one person basically you if you have all these different people playing in the same space. You want to have that space being generated and maintained by a single computer. So that way, you know, you don't have um, you don't have Steve saying, no, I didn't get hit by that bullet. Like he just programs the computer like, no, it wasn't me. You have one one server that everyone interacts with. And, and originally the gamers would host their own servers. But now what happens is, uh, for instance, if I play NBA 2K online, I'm not playing on any one person's PlayStation 5. Rather, it is hosted by a server that is maintained by PlayStation. Mm-hmm. And it is not a server. Or, you know, I may play one game and it loads on one server, and I may load 
in and play a second game and that loads in on another just because that's where the space is. And so the idea of the cloud is it is, from my perspective, a bunch of server space that it doesn't matter to me how it's divvied up and used. I mean, I, I think that's a very good I think that's a very good uh, description. I think that maybe for grandparent level, I might even just say something like. It's a big computer that Amazon owns that we connect to to do things. Right. Pretty much. <laughs> and yeah. Just leave it at that. Yeah. Yeah. That's a shorter version. Oh man, do you have, do you have another doom and gloom article or or, or well? So this is more of a um, getting into some of the dangers that occur in the gaming community. Unfortunately, gaming communities are online are notoriously toxic. E- yes, and this is where not all, not all, not, not all. all. Let's be and clear, it, it, and it actually does absolutely vary from game to game. You do have some game communities that are that are largely very positive, but you can still have even in those positive communities malicious actors within them. That is very true. Now, one community that's particularly known for being toxic is the Rust community. I was expecting League of Legends, but yes, League Rust of Legends makes sense. as well. Mo- MOBAs are uh, MOBAs, which League of Legends is an example of, of a game type called a MOBA. They are designed by a mad scientist in a lab to make you like take the locus of control off yourself and get as angry as possible. The, there's just no better game type that does that. But specifically, what happens in online communities is a lot of online communities will form social communities through, for example, Discord, which we use for our class. Mm -hmm. Um, Reddit's another one. Reddit is another one, etc. But those communities can also be breeding grounds for uh, what we'd call trollish behavior. Mm -hmm. And you end up with situations where some people have just enough technical know-how to cause problems uh, without the maturity to prevent themselves from doing so. And so one of the th- one thing that whenever you look it up, it invariably, almost always, is tied to gaming, is swatting. Yes. It, 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 while in theory, anyone could do it, whenever you read a swatting story, dollars to donuts, it is some kid mad about a video game or trying to mess with a streamer or something like that. And for those who don't know what swatting is, swatting is when a teenager, let's say they, let's say a teenager is mad at me and they find out my home address. They will call a local police station and they will say, I have, I have hostages and guns and bombs and I'm going to kill one hostage every hour until so-and-so shows up. Well, that means in that situation, the police show up in full force. And there are two cases that I know of where someone has died as a result of this. Once, because just the shock of it, of the police kicking in their door, they had a weak heart already. They had a heart attack and they died. Another incident was a, a kid got shot uh, by a SWAT because they thought the, he had stepped out onto his porch and they thought he had a gun, which he didn't. I think it was an e-cigarette. Um, that happens. Another thing is, and this is where two-factor authentication comes up, uh, if, if they're able to get a hold of your password, they can hack your account by just logging in on your account. And this has happened in one of my classes now, where a student had their account uh, hacked by a member of a toxic gaming community, and that person came into our course Discord channel and started posting racial slurs, uh, which was a problem. I mean, we we dealt with it very quickly, but, you know, this is a classroom space that was invaded by someone who has nothing to do with UVA, but using the account of, of one of our students. That's how they were able to get access. Which theoretically, that could happen to any other university system, right? Exactly. Potentially, I mean, in, in, in you know, it, on Piazza yeah, or whatever. I mean, you know, God forbid that student uses the same password for Discord as they use for SIS. 
uh, which is our, our course registration system, in theory, that person could then log in to Zoom's course and just withdraw them from all their courses. That that could be something that, in theory, it, could happen. It, there, are in some theory, safe, in, there are some safeguards. Well, we, we, we enforce two-factor authentication for syslogin. Right. But uh, that, yes, it, to be clear, specifically, that couldn't happen in our case. But just, just some examples. And, and that's yeah. also a big reason why we say never reuse passwords. Uh, mm. and, and to use a password manager. Which we give the kids for free. Yep. Google, Google Chrome's built-in password manager is fantastic, in my opinion. I don't... I, I, don't. I mean, yeah, there's there's plenty of ones. Yeah. I mean, I, the, the one that I like to use, 1Password, I like because it is portable across multiple apps, multiple devices. Is it, is it, is it and password 1234? Is that, is that the password? How, how did you know? Yeah. How did you know what my password was? I have to go change it now. Yeah. Five, four, three, two, one. I'll, I'll never guess that. No, all of my password, all of my, all of my major passwords are all, it's, it's a gay thing. Why? They're like long sentences right. from yeah. various video games that I've played. Cause I can like hear the, I can hear the thing in my mind. And so I'll be in class logging into something and I can, <laughs> I'll get like six words in. So it's like, what the hell is your password? But, um, you know, to this specific instance, um, vandalism is a th- you know w- w- it, it is what it is. It's vandalism. Mm. I mean, it's it's. Um, I mean, swatting is a whole other level right, yes. of, um, you know. But the the the, and uh, and certainly van- vandalism of a digital space can have just as much impact, if not more, than vandalism of a physical space. Mm-hmm. Um, Admitted, even then, sometimes cleaning up a digital space could be just as hard as cleaning a physical space. Right. Um, also, identifying the bad actor um, or preventing that bad actor from doing anything further could be, you know, hard in both cases. Yeah. It's like so, so, so an example is, luckily, I had already had settings in place such that students could not create invites to the Discord on their own. Fac- like the faculty, the TAs could, not students. Imagine if th- that student created an invite and then brought a server of, say, 100 people in. Yeah. Before I, I know this. Is, yeah. This is what happened with Zoom bombing. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, where the links to Zoom accounts or to, to, to Zoom classroom meetings, this was a problem at the beginning of the pandemic. I don't hear about it as much anymore. Maybe it's just gone out of style or maybe people have just gotten better at 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 hiding those links, but I think, yeah, I think it's, both. It's, I, I certainly with swatting isn't as common anymore, but it was very popular for a while. Uh, I, I popular is probably well, I'm not the right more word. About the but, disc, I'm talking more about the discord right. issue. Um, that, that but, in particular seems pretty popular right now. I've heard actually a lot of stories now that I'm dealing with it myself with other classes at other um, universities or other classes at other universities specifically. I have, I've not heard of another case at UVA specifically. Do we need to do anything to our discord? <laughs> I, I've already, I've already done them actually. Um, Sorry. I made changes cool. without telling you. <laughs> oh no, you prevented a problem. I'm yeah. I mean, in favor well, but, of this? but here's the thing. So, so there's nothing that I can do to absolutely prevent it. Uh, sure. One of the changes I'm, that I, I'm working towards making, and I'm actually going to tell students about this, is we're going to start requiring two-factor authentication on on our Discord. But given that we have project groups that are that are using it, we have to um, phase that in. We can't just I can't just flip the switch while they might be working on something. But there's an option in Discord to say you can only chat here if you have two-factor authentication set up. I mean, some of this still doesn't prevent if we have a student. OK, it's a little mm-hmm. different for us because we actually have a record of everyone's student of everyone's account name with who they actually well, are in 3240, uh, in which our is our class. software engineering class. In my other course, we no, don't. You don't. And, and that's partly was intentional by design and partly yes. just a matter of logistics of I have 700 students and. Of not all of them yeah, are even on the Discord because it's only used for online office hours. Right. Uh so sorry that you had to deal with that. Mm-hmm. Thank you for fixing ours, I guess. Yeah. But you know, I I mean there's still nothing to prevent. I mean 
just like a student could stand up in the middle of class and, you know, call me a jackass, which has happened. Um, you know, things like that could certainly happen on the Discord as well. Mm. Hey, how about how about we move to to more silly something things? a little bit lighter? Just to, a just little to bit t- lighter. Go ahead. Uh, I got a, a few more questions from no stupid uh, no stupid questions to close us out for today. Uh, I want to start with this one. Can you guys tell me some positive things about becoming an adult? Um. Okay, authentically, and I really mean this. Uh, I am. I do. I mentally was in such a better place by the time I hit my even mid twenties than I was in in late teen years that it, it's oh, hard for yeah. me to describe. Uh, and a lot of that really is just chemical changes in the brain that that mm-hmm. that start to settle down by that point. Um, having income is nice. That that's a big one. That, yeah, having yeah, having 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 I, two things immediately popped in my head when I read this question. The first is I'll let you know when I become an adult. Yeah, because um, I still <laughs> I still, you know, it's one of those things. It's like I've got a mortgage. I've got a kid. I've been a you know, I, I'm in a career. Still don't necessarily think I feel all adulty, but, yeah. you know, whatever. The other was renting a car. I don't know why, but for some reason, I was like, that's something you can do when you're an adult. You can rent a car. Yeah, because. <laughs> You can. I don't know. Um. No, I mean, I, like, uh, so I'll I'll just try to say it. I don't miss being a kid, and and I feel weird saying that because it's, everyone else is like, it's not like I had some horrible childhood or anything. I just like, yeah, I don't really miss, you know, bedtimes and. <laughs> and I, I, I want one. I living want with my Can parents. I, I, I don't. Can I don't I miss those those things. Um, I I granted, I very much I, love the job that I do. I I feel like I've made the kind of life that I would I would like to have. So I'm certainly lucky in, in those respects. But yeah, no, I I I would say I'm in a better happier place now than i've ever been in my life and you know i the, a lot of those reasons that i was stressed as a kid just don't exist anymore so i all of that i i i, I yeah I, I i i definitely feel all that but on a more like again random lighter note today i was sitting at my computer so i was working from home today mm-hmm. and i thought i want lunch I could just order like DoorDash and have Indian food here because I have a job Mm -hmm. and I could pay for it. And I started filling out the order. I was like, this is delicious. I can't wait for this. I got to the end and with with delivery and everything, it was forty (laughs) dollars. And then the bad part of being an adult, (laughs) the bad part of being an adult was like, that's a waste of money. I think I have a leftover hot dog in the refrigerator. I'll just go eat that. (laughs) Yeah. Here, here, here's, here's, here's one to end on. Is it just me, or do a lot of people look like Andy Circus? Or does Andy Circus look like a lot of people? <laughs> or does Andy Circus look a lot of people? I mean, it really depends. You know, there's a lot of CGI going on there. Do you think Andy Circus is CGI in real life? Um, yes, <laughs> I think he is just a projection. On an android body, Andy Serkis and, uh, isn't even a real person. It's just he is. Your your parent your parents lied to you so that way you'd you'd behave when the the Lord of the Rings movies were coming out. The only and and um, it was your the, mom wait. and dad the whole time. Okay, it is it is Andy Serkis that also plays Claw in um, Marvel movies, right? I there's a character called Claw. I admittedly, yeah. I and this is this is where I have to turn a nerd card. I. Don't go out of my way. To, I'm, I'm, I was burned out on superhero movies by the late 2000s, and we're here like 11 years after that. I'm still supposed to follow these. I just can't anymore. Okay, I follow all of them. Okay, yes, he played U- U- he, Ulysses Claw, okay. who is um, he's the bad guy who steals a bunch of vibranium from um, Wakanda. Okay, okay, but but I was thinking like uh, when you said Claw, I'm like Inspector Gadget movie exit i'll get you next time gadget next time that's actually, that's actually pretty good it's actually pretty thank good. you yeah 
I, I, I never I, liked how the villain had a cat because I liked cats as a kid, and I'm like, wait, what? Does that mean I'm evil? I mean, I, I mean, yes, cat, but for for unrelated reasons. Penny in Inspector Gadget is such a great role model for girls for taking charge, solving problems, mm -hmm. being you know scientific. And she had a great dog. And, you know, there you go. We need more Inspector Gadget. Maybe Samuel wants to start watching Inspector Gadget. we just swap the Gadget. pets, though? Like, give Penny the cat and Dr. Cloud. Just, just like the Cat Lover's Edition. But Brain was awesome. He had that cool call. Anyway, anyway. <laughs> thank you all so much for spending this time with us. We know that the time during the day is one of the most precious, res precious resources that you have. And that you have decided to spend with us. Just touches our hearts, and we we very much appreciate it. If you have not had the opportunity to subscribe to this lovely podcast on the service of your choice, we'd very much appreciate it. Whether it be Apple Podcasts, uh, on, on Spotify, Google Podcasts, whatever it may be, we really appreciate it. We appreciate any feedback you can give us. If you can leave us a review on these services, help other people find the show, or if you want to send us a message at hosts at regradequest.com, we would love love to actually get an email. <laughs> you know, oh, honestly, boy. you know, we get so much other email from our students. Um, you know, maybe. I don't even know. But regardless, regardless, if you have a, a, a topic you'd like us to talk about, if you have a suggestion, if you have a message you want to leave us, go to anchor.fm, go to regradequest.com, and you'll find a button there that you can record an audio message and send it to us. We'd love to play it on the show. Send us, send us your request. Send us your thoughts. Find us on Twitter, whatever it may be. We hope you're doing well. Hope you enjoyed this 17th episode of Regret Requests as we continue to march toward whatever number we actually end up at. <laughs> Take care, be safe, and watch for Falling Goats. Especially, ah. especially the default skin Falling Goats. Oh, God. No, they're such no, noobs. No, they're Andy Circus Goats. Yeah. Wait, wait, Dress wait. Up. Hear me out, hear me out. Andy so listening. Andy Circus Falling Goat movie. Michael Bay, let's call him up. It'd be it'd have about as much plot as every other Michael Bay.